What's up, Laker fans? Julius Randle took a huge leap forward in the 2018 season. In this video, I take a look at where he's improved the most and look ahead toward the next stages of his development. But first, SeatGeek is an app that aggregates tickets from all over the web, making buying simple. They put a 1 to 100 score on every ticket so you know if you're getting a good deal or a bad one, and they let you see the view from your seats before you buy. Click on the Me tab and enter the promo code LFR to save $20 off of your first order. You can download the app by clicking the link below the video. By supporting SeatGeek, you're supporting my content too, so please use them when you got tickets to buy. If you want more thoughtful sports media, this is the best way to send that message. We gotta start with Julius's improved physical conditioning because that underlied every aspect of his improvement. This allowed him to elevate at the rim in ways he wasn't capable of in previous years. These are some clips of him jumping off of one foot and watch how the extra explosion allows him to adjust midair. The same was true off of two feet. Watch the force that he generates off of this powerful jump stop going right over the top of Millsap. It takes good core strength to dunk off of a spin move like this. But Julius still isn't a high fly act, so he often double clutches around the rim. But due to the additional elevation that he got this year, he was much more successful at that. So with that in mind, watch some examples of his lack of explosion from last season and how that impacted his ability to finish at the rim. But there was also mental growth where he would utilize jump stops and pump fakes around the rim and was generally more patient. We've taken a look at how Julius finished around the basket, now let's look at how he got there. When Julius posted up, it was usually on the left block. Most teams have rules against letting guys go middle in these situations, and you can see Nance's position to take that away. This is the context where he utilized what became his go-to move this season, the drop step. Off of the dribble, he would drive to his right and initiate contact with his left shoulder before using the drop step. He got good at this little jump hook off of these when he couldn't get all the way to the basket. Footwork is crucial on these type of moves and this is an area where he really improved. As he drives right and makes the drop step, both feet are facing the basket. This is how it's supposed to be done. Watch this play from last year by comparison. After he completes his drop step, his toes are pointing away from the basket. That meant that he had to twist in midair and lost explosiveness because of it. He had a counter to this move that he'd usually use when he thought he had a strength advantage rather than a quickness one. He dribbled to the right, then faked like he was going to go to the drop step, then initiate contact again, get space, rip over, and finish.
He didn't post up on the right block as often, but he did occasionally. If he had a smaller defender on him, he would still get middle and just go over the top of them. If the middle was taken away, he'd utilize drop steps in these situations as well, although he'd almost always go back to his left hand to finish. In the 2016-17 season, these were often difficult jumpers and fadeaways instead. He was a lot more patient with his finishes this season. Here he drop steps against Whiteside but doesn't get the advantage. So instead of shooting that little fadeaway, he gets back to his left hand and gets an and one. I thought that Randall's best passing this year came out of the post. He was at his best when he was stationary, making reads on split cuts, speed cuts, or to weak side shooters. Randall in the post as both a scorer and as a passer became one of the Lakers' most reliable half-court plays. Teams have always played off of Julius, daring him to take the jumper. In previous years, that would often lead to wild drives or him taking the jumper and missing. This season, Julius learned how to eat up that space by utilizing spin moves, which are very similar to those drop steps. So rather than improve his jumper, he reduced how often he needed to take it. Guys like Ben Simmons and Markel Fultz also use this technique to get to the basket even when defenses are sagging off. These two clips are from the 2016-17 season when he wasn't able to complete this move as effectively. He would also utilize a right to left crossover in these situations, often against a slower footed big. And if defenders didn't commit to the drive going right, he would initiate the shoulder bump with his left shoulder and elevate over them. It's difficult for the defender to jump in the split second after he's received contact on these. Randall's improvement on the pick and roll was notable, but I don't think it was all that complicated. In previous seasons, he didn't make too much effort to make contact on screens. did a much better job of that this year and got both himself and teammates open more often as a result. Here he sets up with his top foot above Devin Booker's top foot. This helps to ensure contact on the screen. Another area where he improved was getting parallel with the ball handler on the roll. 
him and Isaiah Thomas are on the same plane here. So now you have a three on two situation because IT's defender had to go so far over the top. The defensive big has to pick up IT or else he gets all the way to the basket. That means the weak side wing has to either tag Julius and leave Kuzma open or vice versa. Julius and IT being on the same plane makes this a pick your poison situation. Randall's defensive improvement mirrored his offensive progress where he took a leap forward in on-ball situations. He did an excellent job of using his quickness in the post to beat his man to the spot. But Randall's most substantive defensive work this season was on switches. He's always had the quick feet necessary to apply ball pressure to guards, but this year he had the conditioning to execute it. And while he still has holes in his pick and roll game defensively, I thought he did a nice job of contesting jumpers off of drop coverages. And while he's still not good at it, he did a much better job of closing out to spot up shooters this season. Let's keep it on the defensive end where both his effort and his numbers dropped significantly in the last 15 games. In his defense, he was playing a ton of minutes and carrying a lot of the offensive responsibilities with all of the injuries. But with his contract situation and issues with this in previous years, I could understand why this would be cause for concern. I thought that he did enough to earn the benefit of the doubt this season, but this is worth noting. Outside of effort level, I know that the Lakers coaches want him to get better as a weak side defender. Here you see Corey Brewer pointing out that he wants to switch the screen, but Randall doesn't read it. Offensively, the next step for Julius is to better understand his gravity. In each of these clips, I'm going to freeze it when he should pass and point out who he should be passing it to. He's consistently drawn a second defender throughout the year, but sometimes when he's on the move, he puts his head down and doesn't see the open man. This is a good example of where film work can help a player. While he has some ability as a stationary passer, he takes too many chances on low percentage plays.
Julius Randle's right hand or lack thereof has always been a topic of discussion. Personally, I think that's overblown as evidenced by his percentages around the rim this year. For some reason, that's a criticism that only left-handed players get as there are plenty of right-handed players who don't finish well with their left hands. But of course it wouldn't hurt to improve on this. His biggest issue on these is bringing the ball back into the shot blocker when he drives to his right. Last but not least is his jump shot, which I do think is important to reach his potential. I think his biggest mechanical issue remains his left to right hip twist, which you can see here. He did a lot of great work without much of a jump shot this year, and I don't think it should be his bread and butter, but this is the one instance where I think it's really important. When the guard drags two defenders with him against ice or drop coverages, oftentimes the paint will be too clogged for Julius to drive. If he can just hit this three, which will be wide open when this happens, he'll add an important dimension to both his game and the Lakers offense. Both Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram see a lot of these drop and ice coverages a lot because of shooting issues of their own. So until Randall can hit this shot consistently, he's a problematic pick and roll partner for them. But all told, Julius Randall made a tremendous leap forward in the 2017-18 season. I think he'll be back next year. Alright, that'll do it for this one. My goal is to create consistent and thoughtful content that helps you enjoy the Lakers on a deeper level. I'm very much dependent upon Laker fans to continue this work, so if you believe in what I do, please click either the Venmo or Patreon links below. Thank you for all of your support. I'll catch you guys next time.